You're listening to the very first version of the I Do Wedding Workshop. Good morning and welcome to the very first episode of I Do Wedding Workshop podcast that we're going to be holding once a month. My name's Veronica. Uh, You're listening to Mornings with V from 9 to 11 on a Wednesday. And this morning I'm joined with Valerie De Silva from Together Forever Weddings. Good morning, Val. Good morning, Veronica. And also a friend of mine and also a specialist that I have in from time to time, Michelle from Bloom Entertainment. Hi, Michelle. Morning, V. Morning, Val. Morning, Michelle. Uh, so what is about um, I Do Wedding Workshops that would make someone want to tune into the podcast? It's all about saving a, a potential bride and groom money, time, and stop them from falling into the traps of overspending on their wedding. And today is all about the benefits of a wedding planner. Um, I've asked you and invited you to be part of I Do Wedding Workshops, Val, because I know that you are one of the best at what you do, and we are after absolute premium industry wedding industry specialists. So let me ask you, because I can Read your resume. Um, I don't think that says really enough. I think coming from you yourself, why do you do this? Why are you a wedding planner and why are you considered to be really good at what you do? Okay, so let me start, first of all, by thanking you, Veronica and Michelle, for having me here today. We're going to enjoy a fabulous hour together. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I, you know, absolutely, truly absolutely love what I do. I personally think I have the best job in the world. Sorry, girls. <laughs> I'm probably the most passionate person you'll meet when it comes to weddings. I live, breathe, 
eat weddings. Um, a bit like that Julia uh, Roberts movie. Um, so I get to work, you know, with brides and grooms from all walks of lives, from various cultures. We get to focus on traditions. You know, my couples are your everyday bride and groom, uh, you know, who are, you know, whether they're a teacher or they're working in schools or they're running their own businesses or, you know, tradies or, you know, they're, they're stay-at-home mums. So that is who I have the pleasure of working with. And being able to create something truly magical and spectacular with them. And sometimes I might spend, you know, as short as a three-month period, up to six months, up to a year, up to two years with my couples. So you could imagine the rapport and the relationship building that goes on through that period of time. And what I always say to my couples is I'm like that little angel that sits on their shoulder, you know, that fairy godmother that sprinkles her fairy dust over the next 12 months of planning their wedding. And it's just this passion that I have for weddings, working with brides and grooms, being able to take their vision, take their initial concept, you know, turn that into wedding design, styling and elements, and then deliver and orchestrate this perfect, amazing and unforgettable wedding day where they walk away and said, our wedding was the best wedding we've been to. But also their guests walk away hugging them and said, your wedding was the best the number one thing people are saying on Monday morning after their wedding, your wedding was just, wow, can you do it again? When are you getting married again? Five years, 10 years celebrations. So that's what we aim for is unforgettable, memorable experiences. And I throw everything that I have, my heart, my soul, everything into working with my brides and grooms to achieve wedding perfection. And and that's why you don't do many weddings a year, do you? You're very selective about um, about your clients. Who, Who is your ideal client? Great. Okay. So my ideal client would have to be what we, what I actually specialize in is helping busy engaged couples. So those that are building houses that may be studying at the same time, they may have, um, you know, one child on the way. They might have a second child on the way. Mm-hmm. They may be in between jobs. They may be traveling for work. Uh, they may be wanting to plan a destination wedding. So we help busy engaged couples achieve wedding perfection through our various services services that we offer. Uh, And we find that our brides and grooms are really just who I might run into a shopping centre, someone that I might meet at a bridal expo. It might be a friend of a friend's. It might be someone that I've come across along my travels. So whereby once wedding planners used to be something quite luxurious and thought of as only accessible to the rich, the famous celebrities, it is now accessible to every single bride and groom. And I think that's absolutely huge. Um, so, Mish, I know that you do a lot of work with Val. One of the things that I know is really important when I'm working with weddings, and I, I often, when I turn up to an event, I'll know straight away if I'm working with the A-list. And the A-list are the people that I've worked with before that I've got a really great relationship with that I know we're all there to serve the bride and groom. There's no one there with any other agenda other than to make sure the bride and groom have the day that they've asked for. So on on the topic of relationships, how important is working with someone like Val, how important is the relationship that you have? To us, it's priceless. We find it fantastic for the clients, find it fantastic for us. It's just the easiest way to work because you know that you've got other people around you that you can trust. Someone like Val in Val's position will only work with certain suppliers. Mm. So we know that when our entertainers are going out, they're going out there to have an amazing night because everyone that's going to be there is there just to look after that bride and groom on the night. Yeah. And Val will make sure that they're doing exactly that. So if, if you're listening now and you're getting married and you've tuned into the I Do Wedding Workshop series because you're looking for a bit of more ex- information, you're really enjoying the process, but maybe not enjoying the chaos because it does come with chaos. Mm. I'm married, you're married, you're married. Planning your wedding, doesn't matter how long you take to do it or how short a time you do it, there are so many choices and there are so many easy decisions that can be made that enable you to spend way too much money. The question for you, Val, as a wedding planner is if I'm a bride and I really have been waiting my whole life for this day, but not just so I could turn up in my white dress, but so I could plan it, so I could choose my bridal party, so we could have our hen's night, so I could go um, wedding dress shopping with my friends, so we could do all of those things. Isn't a wedding planner taking some of that out of the process? 
Great question, Veronica. The answer to that is not at all. Having a wedding planner involved in planning your special and perfect wedding day is all about what you want. So it's about your vision. It's about your dream wedding. It's about what you've ever envisaged this day to look like. Wedding planners just know how to get that for you, who to contact, working with premium and elite suppliers like Michelle from Bloom Entertainment. Um, they know what they should be paying for it. They know the mm. order in which things need to be booked in so as not to miss out on the best. You know, often the best will go, even if you're planning 12 months out, will go in the space of a month or two months. And when you're talking about a handful of the best, and that's what clients want. That's what we're able to bring to uh, our clients. So I encourage parents of the bride, parents of the groom, I encourage absolutely everyone, bridesmaids, to get involved because all I'm there is to facilitate. I am there to micromanage. At the end of the day, it's all about them, their family, their friends. We get to take them on that journey where everyone is experiencing this amazing wedding planning journey with the bride and groom. So to keep it short, the answer is no. We're only there to facilitate. So how much of the process, um, let's, let's pretend that I'm a, I'm a bride <clears throat> and miss you're my fiancé. Oh, okay. I like this. So we've, okay. So let's, let's pretend. Let's just pretend. We'll do a little bit of a role play, okay? Awesome. And so we are thinking about getting married and I'm actually broaching the idea with my fiancé about having a wedding planner. And I say, look, I think it would really save us time. And when you save time, you save money for us to actually have someone come along and hold our hand and be like an angel on our shoulder that's helping us make smarter decisions and more informed decisions and be able to have access to the best of the best of the suppliers. And you say to me... I'm the only one that wants to hold your hand, honey. Oh, no, no, sorry, wrong conversation. (laughs) I say to you, I don't know, V, isn't that something that we want to organise ourselves? What do you think, Val? Okay, so great. I love that, girls. You're natural for role playing as well. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, a, it's a real situation, isn't it? Because we're not. Yes. If it were just up to the brides, and I come yeah. along, uh, come across so many grooms that are fantastic at allowing the brides to yeah. do what they mm. need to do on their day to have their magical day. Absolutely. But in the background, having been a bride myself and having uh, coming home to to my fiance and saying, "Oh, guess what? I found this amazing bombonera," and all of a sudden I hear, well, "No, we're not spending that." Mm-hmm. So yes, yes, I'm prepared to. Give you as much leeway and experience as you want but as long as it doesn't cost me much and I, I'm absolutely I'm just disclaiming that I'm not actually saying that all men are doing this and all women are doing this but it's a real situation and a scenario yes. that one of the couples will be more money focused one may be more experienced focused yeah so what would you say? About okay, this so uh, I suppose the reason I got into wedding planning five or six years ago was purely because through research, I'd spoken to a lot of uh, devastated bride and grooms who were now living with a lifetime of regrets, okay? That was from working and booking unre- unreputable suppliers. Mm. They had invested yeah. a lot of time, energy, effort, anxiety, stress, emotions. I know you can relate to what I'm saying, only to be absolutely, you know, devastated by what had happened. So the reason I established, uh, you know, my company basically was to take away all that heartache, all that hard work, all that money spending that was going on to really focus on being able to give my bride what they and groom, um, you know, the biggest thing I say to my bride and groom is in the lead up to your wedding day, I just want you to focus on each other. I want you to be telling me, Val, let's get married tomorrow. I want you to be more in love than ever. I want you to have the closest relationship with your family and friends. You know, the biggest thing I say to my couples, you know, none of them ever say to me, Val, it's not about how much, you know, we pay to have you. It's about how much you saved us in terms of peace on mind. Mm. They said it is priceless. Peace of mind on your wedding day, next to building a house, having children of your own one day. This is the biggest day of your life. Yeah. So much time. You know, we're talking couples after work, long days, nine to five o'clock. They're mentally, physically exhausted. They're having to jump in their cars, go and visit supplies. They might go and see six supplies over a week. And then they go, uh, how do we pick one? Mm, you know, yeah. we're talking, they're putting, you know, it's their time. 
It's time that otherwise could be spent with family and friends, could be spent yeah. together. Yeah. It's all about giving them their weekends back. Yeah. If a bride and groom were to do the work that we do, they would be looking at 250 hours approximately yeah. to plan their weddings, okay? I put all of my suppliers and venues through a rigorous qualification process that ultimately, um, you know, assures me that they're going to be working at the level that I am, that they are passionate that they are professional, that they're service-focused, yeah. quality-oriented and exceed expectations. Yeah. You know, if I need a supply to stay an extra five minutes, sure, Val, no problems. It's yeah. not going to be about where's the credit card. So it is about working and bringing, bringing to the forefront the best of my whole entire team, exactly what you've been saying, Veronica, yeah. that elite premium group of people who truly, as per my, you know, my, we say, we love, we care, we're there. And that's what it is about working with that circle of people who it's all about the bride and groom and making them happy. I would have to say the best, you know, the best part of a bride and groom's wedding day for me is when they come up to me, shower me with cuddles, hugs and kisses and say, Val, we couldn't have done this without you. You are priceless, sweetheart. We have celebrated the most amazing and perfect best day of our night and lives. Wow. You know, yeah. and then to have all their guests saying the exact same thing. That is an extraordinary, incredible emotion. It really is so important that when you think about spending money with suppliers, that you really are spending money with suppliers that have the same passion and commitment mm. as someone like yourself. But more importantly, word of mouth. People are very good at advertising and marketing is just rife. I mean, you, if, you, if you put wedding into Google, you get hundreds of thousands of different um, suppliers that are coming up. So I think asking people for recommendations that have actually used people is just absolutely paramount, isn't it? Oh, that is priceless. And look, you know, I'm I'm so lucky and honoured to work with the teams that I work with. Um, obviously, Michelle from Bloom Entertainment, you know, for the last, you know, five years, my team has been with me. And, you know, we have that working relationship, yeah. Veronica, yeah. but Michelle and I are also friends. We'll go out and have a coffee. We'll yeah. check in, you know, every couple of days and go, hey, how's it going? Yeah. You know, what's been happening? So it's, out, it's outside that relationship, that business working relationship yeah. and hence when our couples get married the adrenaline mm. on the day when they can see where this you know close-knit group you know the the photographer walks in you know kisses my hair and makeup artist you know on the evening comes up and gives you a hug Veronica yeah. and, and kiss and goes you know and we're enjoying and the, the brides and grooms uh, can see the buzz and that yeah. adrenaline and that connection that we all have yeah. to be on hugs and kissing levels they're like wow we've got the best team yeah. in Melbourne mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. on our wedding you know and I think that is so important because I'm, I'm just taking on board what you said before about when you know how amazing it is to plan your own wedding I planned my own wedding and I know what you're saying it's all of that you know spending hours and hours online or visiting suppliers and and checking all that out but until the actual day you don't know whether or not they're going to be reliable you don't know exactly how they're going to be whereas at least by getting a wedding planner and other people in the industry who are familiar with the services involved, you get more of a guarantee. There is a, a peace of mind that you're walking into your wedding day knowing that everything's going to run okay. Yeah, absolutely. And things might go a little bit wrong somewhere but along they the way, have but to. that's but okay. Things have and they'll to go be left. fixed. That's I mean, it. when you, I always say to people, when you're buying a car, you can go and buy that car from any any supplier. But you're going to go to the supplier that, one, knows or, or you feel like they're really intent on serving you and you're going to buy the car from the person who you know if something goes wrong, they're going to fix it. And I think that when you're actually, you know, when you're employing, and you are employing suppliers, but I like to think of us as being invited to someone's biggest day. So when you're inviting me as a singer in a band or as an MC to your special day, I want you to know that if anything goes left, I'm on it. I'm all over it because I'm that experienced and because I'm that committed to the day being it everything that it could be for you. So I'm totally with you, Mish. I think if we, if we need to hire suppliers, for, for you that's listening out there now that's thinking about your wedding day and planning it yourself and thinking, wow, you know, it'd be really great to have a wedding planner. I do wedding workshops 
this podcast is all about talking to a wedding planner to see what the benefits are. And we'll also, we'll talk about the drawbacks as well because, the, you know, there's a, a to and fro to everything. However, if you're really value focused, if you like, if you value your money, you value your time, this is an awesome way to go. So you're here with Val, you're here with Mish and it's V, it's Wednesday morning. I'm going to play a little song and then we'll keep working through the I Do Wedding Workshop. And you're listening to the I Do Wedding Workshop podcast series here at 88.3 Southern FM. I'm in the studio with Michelle and Val, and we're talking all about weddings. Um, Val, a wedding planner, tell me what has been your greatest wedding achievement, a wedding that really stands out for you, and what are the reasons why? Fabulous question. I know, I'm putting you on the spot today because I think are. there are a lot of people listening. I know I've had, I've had so many emails of people just wanting to know how is my wedding going to be different to everyone else's and, and what, what is the benefit of a wedding planner that I can't do myself? So these are the things I really want to ask you today. Wonderful. Okay, so the very first thing I do with my couples before we even start our uh, inspecting venues, meeting with suppliers. We, I'm all about laying the foundations, okay? Because what I would like for my brides and grooms is to ensure that um, their guests can see the best of who they both are at their wedding. It'll be through all the little touches and the little details, but that starts with conceptualising and laying this phenomenal foundation. So we look at, you know, weddings they've been to, what have they liked? 
What have they disliked? What is it that they truly want for their wedding? What is their ultimate wedding day? What is that going to sound like? What is it going to feel like? What is it going to look like? And how are we going to take those foundations into actually developing that into concepts and then being able to take it from concepts to the styling and design elements yeah. and from there deliver on the actual day, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to uh, tell you about one of my um, weddings that I did. So uh, just going back a little bit, December 2012... Uh, it was quite, uh, we're looking at roughly 300 to 350 guests. It was an Indian wedding. Uh, we had this wedding, um, at one of the, you know, premium, one of my premium venues. And there's in a lot Melbourne. involved in an Indian wedding, isn't there? There is yeah. absolutely all the traditions and all the elements and yeah. everything like that that goes with that. Uh, and of course I had, you know, quite a, a, a big bridal party to work with as well. And we were all about, because my bride and groom were having family coming internationally from all around the world. So being able to work very closely with my bride and groom and start the early stages of planning meant that a month before their wedding, as their guests flew in, they were able to enjoy the celebrations. They were able to do all the rituals that needed to be done. You know, um, you know, we're talking, you know, the henna hand, hand designs that yeah, they do beautiful. a couple of weekends before, you know. They were able to take all that in knowing that their wedding day was in my safe hands. So ultimately... Ultimately, my uh, the wedding day uh, was the final day itself after all of these celebrations. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my couples, you know, energy, um, you know, their consciousness of time, their consciousness of how we're going to make all these logistics and operations happen, Val, for our wedding day. Yeah. I was able to do all of that and leave them focused on what it is that they wanted to focus on, which was their family, their friends and each other. And it was truly a spectacular wedding. I have to say it was probably something out of a, you know, an American wedding, you know, yeah. one of my inspirators in this industry is Preston Bailey and um, Jeff Latham. I am the biggest fan and we developed a lot of the concepts. We're talking the lighting. We're talking crystal centrepieces. We're talking, um, you know, the chairs. Everything was just themed and so delicately um you know, delivered, that it was just phenomenal to see, you know. Yeah. So it was a wedding whereby the couple actually entrusted me yeah. as the point of expert yeah. to be able to deliver their day. And I think ultimately that's what my central role is for my couples, is the more they trust myself, my suppliers, like yourself, Veronica, like yourself, Michelle, the more they're going to have this stunning, spectacular day that they have ever dreamed about. Yeah. So, Val, can I just ask you something? Because you made a really important point there. It sounded like you were talking about organising a lot more than just the wedding day. And a lot of people, I think, would think of a wedding planner as just organising the actual wedding day itself. But it sounds like you were doing things yes, a lot more than that. Great observation, Michelle. My role doesn't just entail one of a planner. It's a negotiator. Yeah. It's a mediator. It's a counsellor. It's a friend. It's a shoulder to lean on. By the time we get to the wedding days, my couples are like, we want you to attend as a guest. Yeah. You can see the relationship that gets developed. My couples will have things that happen, bumps and peaks along the way, and I'm there to pick them up, that shoulder, that kind of that middle person yeah. that won't take sides but will listen to both of them and, you know, we'll reach an agreement. And you're right, you know, um, my job is just, it's so vast, it's so personalised, it's so customised, it involves so much love, so much care, you know. Once we've done the foundation, we move on to the budget where I sit down with them over a six-page budget and we I give them a realistic cost of, hey, guys, That's, this is what everything's is going to cost. That is a huge part of the service because how many couples sit down and go, well, what's this going to cost us? And they create a budget based around not knowing. Yes. And, and a realistic budget. That's so important yeah. because we all know that there can be someone offering the exactly the same service yeah. for $500 and for $3,000. It's certainly the most common question that we get yeah. saying, well, why would I pay someone $2,000 when I can get someone else for $500? Yeah. There are reasons that there is a difference in the budget. I actually had no idea that um, that was part of your service as a wedding planner because I was like you, Michelle, I actually envisaged that it's just about doing all all this stuff on the day and giving them a list of suppliers that would give you a cheaper price. But wow, that's that's an amazing value, isn't it? To be able to sit there and know before you even get started, I might have had to pay this for this person. However, I now know exactly how much 
ballpark I'm going to be spending. I know that I'm going to get great advice in terms of who my suppliers are going to be. I know that they're going to be great on the day. I know I'm going to get value from them. And I know that when I turn up on the day, which is what you were saying, what is the most important thing about the wedding? Having peace of mind, knowing that everything that ha- can be done has been done. So I'm going to get there. and I'm going to enjoy my family and friends. That's that's awesome. That that's that's a real learn for me. It's a huge, huge thing, uh, Veronica. I would say, and on that note, I am an educator to my brides mm, and grooms. Yeah. When I sit down with them, it is about educating. Sometimes I'll ask uh, a band, uh, you know, how much is a band, Val? And I'll put a figure out there and they're like, oh, my goodness. And I'm like, and, you know, they'll go, but we've seen it at this price. And that's where then I take, it might take me five minutes, it might take me ten minutes just to explain the value and the education of yeah. them having the most professional, the most reputable band, the quality, the service, you know, when that band gets up there and they're interacting with the audience and they're smiling and it's not just a job for them, it's something that they absolutely love and they're looking forward to. It's all about relationships. Everything that you're saying now and everything that, that you and I have spoken about, Mish, when you've got a relationship with people... You get more value out of those people. Mm, And when you feel valuable, you want to do more. Absolutely. And so when you've got a supplier that knows their value and understands what they can serve you with that value and they feel valuable, Mm. it's just a give, 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 give. It's beautiful on the night. I love that. I love knowing that I've been invited to someone's beautiful day and I want to be there. In fact, it doesn't. Of course, this is my living. I know that I need to get paid. There needs to be a transference of money. But me being there on the night, what I'm actually singing with is absolute passion and excitement for the couple not thinking about what I'm going to be paid at the end. And that is the that is the distinction between having a really great supplier and a supplier who's just going to do the job. Yeah. Spot on. I think you're completely right in what you say in terms of that perfect partnership and, um, you know, working with both you and Michelle. That is exactly what we bring to brides and grooms' weddings mm. is the passion and the honour, the opportunity to yeah. be a part of someone's special day that is you know th- that is just I don't even have words yeah. that's how much it means to me you know we and as you know the two of you would know we're truly moved and touched by our brides and grooms and by what they have to say to us and you know when they're calling us or sending us a text can't wait to see you on my day and they have that peace of mind knowing yeah. you know oh Veronica's going to be getting up there she's going to have a blast yeah. you know my guests are going to have fun we're not going to be able to get on the dance floor. we're going to be on the dance floor all night and yeah. you know it's it's, it's just it just radiates off you. It radiates off you. It just everyone can feel the love. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's absolutely it's infectious. So here's here's a question uh, for brides and grooms that are listening now, planning their day as a wedding planner. Val, what is the biggest mistake that brides can make and grooms can make? So it's, it's just a really open question because I know there's lots of them and I made them and I'm sure lots of other people who have been married have made them. But as a wedding planner and a helicopter view of a wedding, what's one of the biggest and most costly mistakes that brides and grooms can make that they might not make now after your advice? Okay, fabulous question. I would have to say when I meet with my brides and grooms and, you know, We do the budget, but then I say to them, they'll say to me, oh, we've looked at this person, we've looked at this supplier. I would have to say that is where I stop them right there and that is where I'm saving the heartache, the grief, the chaos the uh, the stress of had they not met with me at that point in time and had they gone ahead and booked Mm -hmm. that particular supplier, it would have cost them thousands of dollars. Okay. In what way? So be, be really specific because what you're saying is as a bride, you're walking around, you're, you're going Demerit. and spending time yeah. to see things and you're seeing supplies that are great and you're seeing supplies that are not so great. Absolutely. You're seeing supplies that are really good at having a good conversation and doing a sell and you're seeing supplies that are really good at what they do but they may not be so good at the sell. Mm. They've, they've spent all that time, they come and see you and you say, stop there, Why? Okay, so what I ultimately show them is when I choose uh, for our couples, the suppliers, I have probably about 50 questions, uh, Veronica, that I put them through. They say to me, oh my gosh, Val, it's like I'm going for a job interview. And I'm like, you are, you are representing my brand. When you're there on the day, how you dress, 
how you articulate, yeah. how you correspond with the bride and the groom yeah. and little grandma and, you know, the auntie who's wanting to get that special photo, you are representing who I am. So it is critical that I do interview you, whether it takes two hours or three hours, yeah. to become a part of my team. Yeah. And then I am able to physically share that research, those questions, with my couple. And I'll say, have you asked those 50 questions? What is the answer to question number five? What is the answer to question number 35? And that's where the difference comes in. And they are like, wow, Val, that is music to my ears. I would ne- we would never have thought to have asked that question. And sometimes it will be based around the logistics or the operations of their day, yeah. where I can envisage in my mind their wedding day before it happens from 8 o'clock in the morning till the point they leave at 1am, that's where sometimes there tends to be a little bit of vision, then there's a bit of a break. So it's not that consistent. And when I share that with them and they're like, oh my gosh, we would have really, we would have wasted a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of our hard earned money. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, you know, sometimes I've stopped my brides and grooms from losing $3,000 to $5,000. Oh, you know, right at that point, I'm like, take that money, put it towards your new house put it towards your holiday. So that's very rewarding to be able to assist brides and grooms. And I wish there were enough hours in a day for me to be able to do that. But as you said, we work with an exclusive handful of brides and grooms yeah. because of the quality and the service that we deliver. We aim for excellence. And, and like the Idea Wedding Workshop uh, series, we're all about educating bride and grooms and allowing them access to the information so that they get the best possible experience out of their day. So can I ask you, uh, I'd love to put five questions that you think would be really valuable for a bride and groom to ask a potential supplier onto our Facebook page. What five questions? And I'm just really putting you on the spot here because it's about real situations, so there's nothing prepared in terms of what we're asking and talking about today. But five questions that come to mind for you that would make a huge difference for the bride and groom if they asked a supplier. Because one that comes to mind for me straight away is how many times do I turn up to a wedding where the videographer is in jeans, runners and a, and a bomber mm-hmm. jacket? How many times has that happened? Because it doesn't matter how little you paid that videographer and there are so many people that will say, but it's just video. When you're paying for something, it's great that they might be really good at the photoshopping and doing something pretty amazing. But on your night, they just look like someone who's walked in from the street and they're sitting on the stage because they have no no awareness of where they're at. Mm. So for me, what do you wear when you come to the gigs is, is an absolute big one. And another one that I, w- I would encourage any bride or groom, um, potential bride and groom that's listening, ask your supplier to speak to past clients. Ask them for a couple of past clients that you would be able to call, three to five, that you could ask them for a reference. Definitely. Just do that. It's, it's, it's an uncomfortable question. But, you know, so if you're spending thousands of dollars, I think it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an okay question to ask. So what's it from an expert? What's five questions? Definitely. It's so, so important. I cannot stress the fact that brides and grooms need to do their due diligence. You're spot on with uh, personal presentation and the way suppliers groom themselves on the day. From their attire to shoes to their hair, that is so... So, 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 so important. It's critical, okay? The bride and groom are sophisticatedly, you know, stylishly dressed. You need to fit into that world. That is critical. And as, you know, a big one that I always say is, you know, apart from obviously ringing around and asking your suppliers, can I please have three to five brides and grooms' names that I can contact? So maybe one from this year one from last year, one from the previous year as well. And even one that you bought has already booked you and the wedding hasn't come up the yet. Future. So you can see the... Correspondence the, yeah. thus far and the experience. Yeah. That's very, very important. Ultimately, I think brides and grooms also want to know the journey with the supplier. Yeah. Okay, moving forward. Fair enough. Within the six, nine to 12 months, yeah. what is that going to look like? What points in time is correspondence made? How are phone calls returned? Emails? Texts? The amount of times I hear my brides and grooms say before they've met me, I sent an email three months ago, I'm still waiting. Yeah, move on to the next supplier. (laughs) 
And think about what's going to happen long. after your wedding day when you're trying to pick up your product. Absolutely. Or you don't have that um, continuity leading up to the day. They turn up and do the job and then all of a sudden they're harassing you after the day because mm. they want to get the, the sale completed. That's or right. even worse, they don't turn up on the day and you think, oh, I really should have picked on up on the fact that they didn't call me for three months. Yeah, that's it. And it happens. Mm, it absolutely. does. It absolutely happens. It's a very real thing that's happening every day, Michelle, yeah. every day. Probably the other question that I would say as well, their approach on the wedding day, okay, that is so important. Well, what is the we, question around that? The question around that would be, how do you interact with my parents? How will you interact with my fiancé's parents? How will you interact with our guests when you're trying to do the group photo? When I've got my little grandma next to you who wants to get that precious photo of my fiancé and I, what are you going to say to her? How are you going to communicate and liaise with her? That is critical. You want people that are approachable, that are people orientated, that are that are representing you yeah, absolutely. on the day. This is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely essential. So just because someone's good at their job doesn't mean that they're good in their job. Mm. And I see this so many times, even with staff at certain venues. Um, and, and certainly, if we're not picking on suppliers today. It's just such a huge part of the wedding experience and so much money goes into your suppliers. So that's why we're focusing on it. Um, just because you see a magazine that's got someone's uh, photographers working it and you love the style of it, how often have I gone to a wedding as an MC and I've gone to the photographer, I, you know, can I have your details because I'd like to, um, you know, create awareness with our, our family and friends that you're going to be here tonight. They don't speak to me. They don't communicate with me. They certainly aren't dressed for the part on the day. They're difficult with the family and friends. And you've got photographers at you all day wanting you to smile. Wouldn't you rather be around someone that you're just smiling because you just want to be around them? rather than someone with a camera in your face saying, come on, come on, come on, it's looking so forced. Mm. But when you're with the right supplier, whether it be photographer, cars, whatever, it's naturally a beautiful, fun experience. And it doesn't feel forced or difficult. I couldn't agree more with you. Could not agree. It's something that just flows. It's something that natural, you know, that's natural. And that brings me to probably the fifth you know, my fifth question that they should be asking is, how are they going to work with the rest of your team on your wedding yeah, day? great question. If they have not worked with that photographer, will they call the photographer before the day, introduce themselves? Hi, you know, I'm Valerie. I'm calling, uh, just letting you know I'm going to be shooting on that day. Really looking forward to working with you and creating this splendid day for our bride and groom and just having that previous, you know, building that rapport before the day. Especially because if they haven't worked with the with that, uh, you know, the band or, or yeah, venue before. It's lot, critical. It's, it is critical. A lot of suppliers we've worked with before, so we turn up on the day and we know it's action, let's go. We all know exactly how, how each other works. But it's, it, it, actually it's a really good point that you're making. Um, I'd actually just like to say at this point that I don't believe in bridezillas. I think that there are personality types that are controlling and they're going to be a zilla in every area of their life. (laughs) But I think brides just want the peace of mind. So for the suppliers out there and me being one of them, Michelle, you're one of them, Val, you're one of them. If a bride comes to me and asks me a thousand questions... The first thing I'm going to ask the bride is, what is it that you really want for your day? Because there's obviously a lot of information that you feel is missing and that you need. What do you need from me? Because we need to have that rapport and I need to know exactly where they're coming from. But if you don't want to go through that with every single supplier, it's just so clear to me today after speaking to you that if you're value focused, why wouldn't you go with a wedding planner? It just makes so much sense to me. So let me ask you now, what do you pay? What, what 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 is it worth? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, simple. It is priceless, absolutely priceless. Uh, you know, when you, if a bride and groom were to account for all their costings, all the trips they make, you know, their time, what worth do they put on their time? And to be able to have that person, that PA, that little secretary who's in your corner and has your back for 12 months, what price do you put on that? Yeah. You know, I'm going to be honest, you know, we, um, you know, 
I believe our fees are quite reasonable. Yeah. It is quite small in a lot of instances, but sometimes also depending on what our clients are going for, we can, you know, work out to be free because when they add up, my clients have done it. They've added up the hours that they have to jump in their car. They yeah. have to drive an hour, yeah. drive an hour back. They're going, Val, that's wearing tear on my car. Okay. The e-tag, that's 369, 12, 15, 18. And they add up all the hours. Yeah. They add up, yeah. you know, the, the time that, that, that birthday, that weekend away that they might have missed with family and friends. They're like, we can't get that back. Yeah. You know, that that's part of who we are and we can't get that back. And the stress and the relationship that that puts. So we'll actually do, mm, uh, we will do a podcast on the psychology of, of getting married because it's, mm. people, it does drive you crazy. You're yeah. spinning plates and trying to hold down a relationship and, and trying to communicate yeah. in amongst people who are coming from two totally different places. Absolutely. Um, but you're right. So it saves people stress. It saves them time. saves them money. Money, energy, emotions. Yeah. It, you know, what I I'm going to give you an example here. Yeah. My couples, when I catch up with them, they'll say to me, oh, Val, you know, we've caught up with our friends on the weekend. We were so in love. You know, we, we kept hugging and kissing it. Now, other friends who didn't have a planner mm. were looking at us and they're like, what is wrong with you two? <laughs> and they were saying, we've got Val. We don't, we, we so are So you're enjoying. a love coach as well. I am a love coach, you know, and their <laughs> friends across the, you know, sitting from, from you know, across from them would be fighting and arguing. Yeah. They're like, Val, you should have seen they were arguing and fighting about their wedding. And we're like, oh, we can't wait to tie the knot. We're so in love. Yeah. Let's do this. And that's what I, you know, that's what my couples are all after. And I think. I do. I do. Mm. I love the idea. And I, and I understand because I would have been the same before today's show. So the, the idea of wedding workshops are all about lots of different views because there's lots of different types of brides. It's not one size fits all. My opinion of a wedding planner would have been yep yeah, it's great but I, I could do a lot of that on my own but it's nice just to know that you don't have to that's absolutely totally been shattered now by what you've told me because I understand the value and I understand what you do and I also understand of the time and money that you can save me and also that the uncomfortableness of having to go and interview all the suppliers I'm loving that already but just one thing that's coming to mind for me is just knowing that there's one price that I've paid that's and that's given me all the peace of mind rather than me wondering about, well, that's, that's going to cost me that and, that's gonna, and that could blow out to that and that could blow out to that. I'd rather know that I've spent that amount of money, even if I've, I've blown out another three grand, but know exactly where it's been spent and how it's been spent and it's been spent under my control rather than wondering if I'm going to blow it out three grand because I'm running around like a chicken without a head trying to find answers from people who want to sell me something. Because they don't want to tell me the great things about everybody. They just want to tell me the great things about what they've got. Spot on. Spot on, Veronica. Uh, and that's where I think, you know, the process that we take our couples through financially means that a month before their wedding, yeah. everything is paid for. Oh, that is amazing. It I love is, it. you know, right from sitting yeah. down and doing their budget. Then we have a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet that has all the supplies details you love listed. spreadsheets. I love a spreadsheet. You'll be right onto the wedding planners. <laughs> Nothing like a brilliant spreadsheet with all the items listed for their wedding that shows and reflects all the payment. Yeah. It's not, where's this receipt? Honey, have you paid that off the credit card? Where did that money come from from our account? It is a complete document that at any point in time you can reference and see what has been paid for, what hasn't. So, And also, I'm an accountability coach as well. I keep you accountable. Every month yeah. I check up with my brides and grooms. Can you put $100 on your ban? Can you put $300 on your dress? Wow. Can you put $50 here? To have someone doing that for you every two to three no weeks. No wonder you only have a handful here. Mm, that's but, right. Yeah. It is. It's quite down to the detail. And I love the idea of having your wedding paid off oh. a month beforehand. Just the... <laughs> The n I've got goosebumps. No stress of money a couple of weeks before your wedding. Yeah. That's amazing. Stress doesn't exist in my vocabulary of words with my clients. Yeah. It never comes up that word. Never. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, so just a, a, a distinction that what service you're offering isn't all wedding planners. You are no. an expert. That's why I've invited you to be part of the podcast series. Um, I really love brides and grooms. I love it. I love the industry and I'm, I really appreciate you've come on to tell us about what you do. But just for people who are listening, it's not the normal wedding planner. These, the people that I have got included in the series are the best of the best. So for all the wedding planners that are out there, <laughs> unfortunately, you might have a few brides coming to you saying, well, 
do you do this? And you'll be saying, well, no, but I, you know, better learn how to. But, you know, I really appreciate you being in here, Val, because um, Together Forever, Forever Weddings has really hit the standard really high. That's why I love having you in the studio. Michelle from Bloom Entertainment, thank you. You've always come in with some great um, tips for us on how always to... Always a pleasure. I know, it is, thank isn't you. it? And it's I not a your fiancé today. Can we do that again? <laughs> I know. Thank you so much, oh. Veronica. Oh, it pleasure. has been just an amazing experience with you this morning to share the love that we both have for our brides and grooms and you too Michelle and for weddings just that vision we're visionaries uh, and experts to be able to share that with the rest of Melbourne this morning I think is just incredible so thank you so much Veronica for having me here this morning Uh, and thank you too Michelle I've loved it Beautiful. Well, I'm actually going to play another song before we uh, finish the program. Uh, I would ask everyone, please, to go to the uh, I Do Wedding Workshop Facebook page because I'll be actually asking Val to give me her five top questions to ask suppliers. If you're out and about and you're in the process at the moment, that's going to save you a lot of time and money straight away because they're things that you can do over the phone. Um, And also we'll have the podcast up by the end of the week. So share it around to all your friends and family that are getting married. Uh, Once a month, we'll be having a podcast and... Val, I'd love you to actually just contribute on the Facebook page as well, if that's okay. Just, Most certainly. Yeah, I'd, I would love that because there's so much that brides and grooms need to know. They don't need to spend a little, lot of money, but they are spending way too much time and it would be great if their day is just absolutely what they wanted it to be. So from V at 88.3 Southern FM, thank you for tuning in. I'm back next Wednesday from 9 till 11. Can't wait to have you and I together. I'll have my coffee and I hope that you'll have yours. Just say yeah.